Good day. Welcome to Allen Educates. So for those who are having hard time to develop a paragraph, this learning session is for you. So learning objectives at the end of this learning session, learners are expected to understand the different ways of writing a paragraph, evaluate paragraphs. So let's define what's a paragraph. So the University of Toronto defines paragraph as a series of related sentences developing a central idea called the topic. Further, it is a block of thought containing three types of sentences, namely a topic sentence that states the main idea, supporting sentence that expands or expand on the main idea with specific facts, examples, details, or reasons, and a concluding sentence which provides a strong ending. So a good paragraph is coherent. That is, one sentence naturally leads on to the next sentence. So when we say paragraph, uh, we are uh, dealing with a series of sentences in which it relates or it shows a certain or a central topic. You know? However, uh, let us all remember that English is very complex and there is always an exception to the rule. No, not all paragraphs are series of related sentences. It can be one sentence as like in the news peg in opinion writing and the lead in news writing. So it is probably consists of 28 to 30 words but it is considered as, as a paragraph. It is often called one sentence paragraph. So, yeah, so the ideas may follow any of the following orders. Uh, a paragraph can be chronological or time order. So this means that uh, from, from the beginning or from, or, or events are sequen sequenced in an order of their occurrence. So for example, uh, in cooking adobo, you write uh, a paragraph indicating on on the steps of cooking adobo. No, this is an example of chronological. So it shows steps, and it is a sequence. It shows sequence. Next is spatial. So when we say spa spatial or space order, so this the reader is taken from the starting place to the other place in an orderly manner. So. This says that a pattern that describes uh, a physical location or a position in a space. So it can be uh, above, below, besides, between, next to, in front of, behind, inside, outside, opposite, within, uh, nearby, and many, many more. So induction naman, if a paragraph starts from a particular to a gen to to general to more general way of writing for example no it can be uh, a sentence or a paragraph showing of have you ever uh, wondered so yung mga how to's no yung mga uh, yung mga uh, particular situations then they will jump in into a certain general idea no so that is an example of induction uh, induction as a means or as a context in writing a uh, paragraph no uh, in the other hand the deductions from general to part to particular for example all living animal all all, all living uh, things or living uh, organisms is from a cell no has a cell no then then from that general topic down to the to the most complex so a cell has this uh, this dimensions this size it can be uh, uh it can it is discovered by so yun mga yun yung paraan ng deduction no from general to specific or to particular and yung induction naman from particular to general so there are links that cement the different parts of a paragraph. So the most common transitions are the transitional words and phrases like conjunctions. 
So conjunctions are are uh, are the words that connect phrases, clauses, and sentences. So the most common is the fanboys. No, we already know that though the for and nor but or yet so, and the conjunctive adverbs adverbs when you see conjunctive adverbs, uh, these are the adverbs that uh make the sentence uh savvily or make the sentence easy to read so hindi siya putol putol may connection for example thus the answer is however yon yung mga yung mga ganong salita no for um, another example is additionally nevertheless hence therefore no and the connective phrases naman these are the phrases that can be a pattern in writing so for example it is common knowledge that uh, like this like that and those and very likely to consider as it is logical to believe yun, yung mga yung mga phrases na ganun. next repetition of keywords so in writing a, a paragraph and in using transition we use keywords so keywords are the variables in your paragraph so meaning to say these are the words that has or are, are a noun that has a intended meaning and it is very important no so this is a key player in writing no for example you are talking about the covid-19 pandemic so the covid-19 pandemic is a variable hence it is a key keyword no uh, pronoun reference. So instead of using uh, "Shina, Shina, Shina," for example, "Shina has a new car." "Shina is beautiful." So if bis na uh, gamitan yung "Shina, Shina, Shina," pinapalitan natin siya ng pronoun ref ng mga pronouns like uh, "she, he, you, we, they, it." So like that. So methods of developing a topic sentence. So the topic sentence or the thesis statement. Is the central idea of an essay, or an for this is a paragraph around which all the other ideas revolve. It is not just the most important idea, it also controls the essay by determining what you should and you should not include in your work. In one sentence, it reveals and summarizes the argument you intend to develop, a def to develop and defend. So, this is the main point of your paragraph. No, usually. Um, if if it is uh, explicitly written, it is the first sentence. No, traditionally it is used as uh, as the first sentence in a paragraph. So this is the topic sentence because uh, primitive people believe that the first sentence is a very important sentence in a paragraph. But here in the uh, more recent writings, hindi na siya uh, applicable means san may mga thesis statement na im na implicit so we need to say implicit hindi siya nakikita so it is for you to to know in various sentences no so yan so we have different methods no we have by definition by example and illustration by analysis by comparison and contrast by analogy and cause and effect so this is very important ways of writing a paragraph because this can be you can this can be used not only in the academe but also in real life if you are writing a letter to a to a person, letter of intent, letter of apology. In writing your paragraph, you can write uh, professionally, ethically, and it can boost your self-image if you are if you are knowledgeable of different methods of developing a topic sentence. Okay. Moving forward, the first method is by definition. So when you see by definition the meaning of the term is defined for example so in this uh, paragraph so a blog a blog is an inter in electronic journal or notebook that you can fill in you can fill in with your ideas opinions writings and a lot more the term blog is a blend of the words web and blog 
Uh, authoring a blog, maintaining a blog, or adding an article to an existing blog is called blogging. So, in a blog, you are free to write, to react, or enlust your ideas upon the web. So, basically here, he start the sentence by definition. No? Or by referring. What is a blog? No? Next, by example and illustration. So, but when we say by example and illustration, so this method involves specific facts, uh, conditions, or incidents uh, that are given to support a point. So, for example, some time-honored local traditions have changed through the years. So, that can be his claim or his or her claim. So, the Atietian Festival in Aklan is an example. So, during the pre-Spanish period in Philippine history, the Atis of Panay Island held this celebration as some kind of ritual after solicitating food from the Datus of Borneo. When the Spaniards come, the Santo Nino was integrated into the fiesta to give it a Christian meaning. So, the Atietian of the day is a mixture of religious ritual, indigenous rivalry, and social activity. So here, the writer implies or involves examples and illustration of his or her claim. So, sabi niya, the same time honored local traditions have changed. So, yon he, is, he supported that by implicating the different uh, uh, anecdotal evidence. So, the next I, I'll try that next week, week or in the next few weeks we, uh, we study about different evidence in employing different types of evidence in writing. So here he employs some historical and anecdotal evidence. So yung when Spaniards come, the Santo Nino was integrated into the fiesta to give it a Christian meaning. So here basically in writing his paragraph, uh, he employed examples and illustrations, not mere definition. Okay? Moving forward, number three, by analysis. So, when you say by analysis, uh, this is a method where the subject matter is divided into parts and then each part is developed in turn. No? For example, our constitution created a national government with three distinct branches. They are the, the legislative branch, senate or congress, and the executive branch, the president or the cabinet, and the judicial branch, the justice system. So no one branch has absolute power. So each one has its duties and limitations. So for example, the president is the own is the one to appoint Supreme Court justices, but those appointees must be approved by Congress. On the other hand, when Congress makes a law, the president has to has the right to veto it and the supreme court may determine whether it is constitutional constitutional or not so this separation of powers prevent any one branch or person from becoming too powerful so by analysis there's a uh, uh, the central idea is uh, is what we call chop no in the layman's term, it is chopped into three, into parts, so that effectively to know all the parts of the idea. So, yung, ano niya, yung thesis statement niya, our constitution created a national government with three br branch ideas. So, he didn't define it, he didn't make illustrations, but neither he make uh, analysis in the three branch of the government. No? So, ayan. So, by analysis, pa ganun. Next, by comparison and contrast. So, when writing, this is the method in writing that the similar and different features of, of things and ideas belonging to the same class or category I pointed out. For example, spirituality plays an important role in our health, but there is a difference between health and unhealthy spiritually, according to Dr. David Stevens' script. Scriber, the author of the best-selling book, The Instant to Heal. If prayer produces a state of calm, of love, and a sense of belonging, such prayer has positive physical effect on our health. 
But if the spirituality is moralistic, it's not necessarily healthy. Interpreting illness as some kind of divine punishment may impede recovery, but a power, power of faith and hope could improve a patient's chances of getting well. So here, in comparison and contrast, two things are being compared and know their similarities and differences. For example, here, the spirituality is uh, is interconnected as such in health. No, binigay niya yung difference and ano niya man yung mga pros and cons in believing na yeah. No, so you have prayer produces state of calm that is pro. No, a sense of belonging that is also pro. The prayer has positive physical effect in the pro, but he also include the cons, no, or the contrast, no, the the spirituality is more realistic, it's not necessarily healthy, tapos in uh, interpreting illness as some kind of divine uh, punishment may impede recovery. So here we can say uh, that the subjects no in spiritual or the main variables the spirituality and the health have been compared and uh and define what is the difference and similarities key okay. next number five the, the fifth method is by analogy so in analogy the two unlike things with similar features are compared so kung doon sa comparison and contrast ang similar and different features of things and ideas belong to the same class or category i pointed out so meaning to say doon sa compare and contrast Paro silang category, so kaya ang abaga doon, interconnected ang spirituality at ang health. No? So that is being compared. So dito naman sa by analogy, two different things are compared. No? So that is the difference. The main difference is that by in analogy, two different uh, entities are compared. No? However, in by comparison and contrast, two similar things yung mga features na lang nila ang dinidifferentiate no? yung features nila so sa I hope wag kayong malito so dito yung and societies at human beings so let us read and societies resemble those of human beings people societies may be divided into four cla classes or stages the hunting pastoral agricultural and industrial and sub stages of development corresponding to the first three. So the legionary ants live solely by the products of their chase. So those belonging to the pastoral class keeps, keep domestic animals like plant leaves, scale insects, and caterpillars. So the agricultural class is represented by the, by the harvesting ants which collect share and plant seeds. So here, uh, differentiate ang dalawang unlike things, yung and societies and human beings. But this uh, example focus on the ant societies, on how they live, how how ants how ants live, no? Number six, or the last is by cause and effect. So in cause and effect, this is the method where a situation is described and is give it is and it is and its cause is given for example an a, a, an ex exhaustive study of ocean species and ecosystems scientists observed that the trend toward mass disappearances of fish and seafood species spending up so if the long term trend continues all fish and seafood species are rejected to disappear by 2040 this rejected damage to the ocean would happen if accelerating overfishing and pollution of the oceans would not be abated. So here, this is the uh, the method where the effect, no, dito inuna niya yung effect, no, and yung cause. Ano? Uh oh, -uh. so this 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 uh certain certain mm, example indicates the cause and the effect no so if the if uh if overfishing and pollution dao is not abated so in 2020 a study that oceans and, and ecosystems that trend toward 
mask disappearance. So this is the effect. That is the possible effect of the cause of overfishing and pollution. So yung pagkawala ng mga seafood species, no? Or ng ibang species. Okay. To summarize, so by definition, my when we say by definition, the meaning of the term is defined. So by example and illustration, specific facts, conditions, or incidents are given to support a point. So by analysis naman, subject matter is divided into parts and then each part is developed in turn. Kapag by comparison and contrast ang method ng writing a paragraph, it is similar and different features of things and ideas belong to the same class or category I pointed out. But in the in by analogy, two unlike things with similar features are compared, and the cause and effect a situation is described and its cause is given. Okay. So let us recognize pattern of development. So, for item number one, every nation has been the slave of some besetting idea. The Egyptians were slave to the idea of life after death the Greeks to the idea of beauty, the Romans to the conquest, the medieval people to that of the church, the Germans to that of autocracy, our forefathers to that of freedom. We are slaves of the idea of time. So what do you think is the answer? Okay, the answer for this is by analysis. No? Kasi, pinag-compare-compare niya yung mga uh, yung ibang iba-ibang nation no different nation of how it becomes slave of something besetting idea no you have the egyptians the greeks the medieval people the german and our forefathers next number 2 to help solve the country's high rate of fertility the problem of poverty must be addressed first so, poor families tend to have more children because they feel threatened when they see their children, especially those under 5 years of age, getting sick or dying from, ironically, preventable diseases. They want to replace the children whom they have lost or may lose. So, children help in the farms and other workplace to augment the family income. So, here, so you may guess it. So, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So, time is up. So, here, uh, the author or the paragraph has an effect and a cause. So, in order for thou, so for in effect to solve the country's health high rate of fertility, the problem of poverty must be adhered first. So, here, we can clearly say that this is an example of cause and effect. Okay? Number three. So life, life as culture, shapes all living things. So as an artist, it designs every leaf of every tree and colors every flower. Life is a musician and has taught each bird to sing its love song, the insects to call each other in the music of their m multitudinous sounds. Life is a sublime chemist and gives perf perfume to the rose, changing water and carbonic acid into sugar and wood. And in so doing, releasing oxygen that animals may have the breath of life. One, two, three, four, five. Time is up. So here, so, so this uh, paragraph shows the life, no, the life in a definition of an artist. So in, in, in one reading, you can say that it is by definition. However, if you will really, uh, in, if you will really uh, uh, study it, if you really analyze it, say so it is by example and illustration. No? Because aside from, uh, from defining or for, uh, for describing life, he incorporates uh, specific facts conditions and incidents no kasi as an artist so this means that the writer uh, talks or writes about about an evidence that is anecdotal this came from her or from him no 
So this is this is an example of by example and illustration. Okay, moving forward for number four. So a fine distinction between health and disease is often difficult to make. So in a general sense, diseases is the opposite of health. It is a harmful departure from normal. So disease is usually associated with misery, whereas health is associated with abundant and zestful living. So disease is not a static condition, but a changing one. It is the result of mal malfunction, which produces change. These changes may take place rapidly or slowly, producing mild reactions or severe results ending in death okay one two three four five times up so here no notably we can see that uh, a fine distinction between health and disease is often difficult to make so meaning to say they are they are are in the same class health and disease no but they are contradict even though they are opposite no there are they are ironic no in each other they are indeed in the same class no disease is under the health no and here uh din describe niya yung pagkakaiba the difference of health and disease in the succeeding sentences so this is an example of by comparison and construct contrast for the last one so proteins in foods are either complete protein proteins or incomplete proteins so cheese eggs fish meat and milk which are the best sources of proteins are complete proteins because they contain adequate amounts of all the amino acids required by the human body. So cereal grains, legumes, nuts, and vegetables are called incomplete proteins because they lack adequate amounts of one or more of the essential amino acids. However, a combination of two incomplete proteins can provide a complete amino acid mixture. One, two, three, four, five. Time's up. So for the last for the last uh, exercise or for the last paragraph, so the proteins in foods are uh, in, is either are either complete proteins or incomplete proteins. So this means uh, are in this paragraph uh, proteins in in various contexts or in foods or in vegetables are defined no so he, hence this is uh, a paragraph by definition no you the, the succeeding paragraph if you can notice are just uh something depend uh characteristics or def or or description about proteins no para lang din siya yung sa blog kanina dun sa blog example kanina so yan so i hope uh you get this no if not, you can rewatch the video. So the references are the University of Toronto and uh, Gabriel JP, 2004, The World Literature and Communication Arts 10. So think, okay. So thank you, and I hope you learned something today. So we learned something today. So drop a comment if you want to, and I am very willing to uh, to reply to that. So. Thank you, and if you find this learning material or le learning session helpful, don't forget to subscribe. Again, this is Almar Ordesis, your learning facilitator.